All right, in this URDF tutorial, I will show you how to describe any robot using links and joins. I will go over what is an URDF file, the general structure, go through the general structure of a link, talk about the visual types of geometries used in URDF files, the origin, RPY, and XYZ, material property, collision, inertial, a link example, talk about types of joints, parent and child link, origin and axis, dynamics, limits, a joint example, and finally, we'll go over a robot example. So by the end of this video, we will see how we could control R2-D2 in Arvis by using these sliders on the right. So what is an URDF file? So URDF stands for Unified Robotics Description Format, and it's a .xml file used to describe the visual, physics, and connections of a robot with joints and links. So here is a general structure of an URDF file. So we typically will have an XML version on the top. We'll have a robot name, and then it's going to be broken up into two sections, typically. So you have a link and a joint. So inside of the link, we'll have a link name and have the visual collision and inertial properties. And inside of the joint, we're going to have axis, parent link, child link, origin, and so on. So these, this is the main structure that we typically will see. And if we take a look at a generic joint, it typically looks like this, where we have a joint where it has, which has a frame. And then each of these other components, like the visual, collision, and inertial, will have a frame as well. So now let's dive into the links in an URDF. So a link is used to describe a segment of a robot. So you could define a visual collision and inertial properties. And the geometry and origin properties are used in the visual and collision properties to describe the shape and location of the link. So you could take a look at the general structure of a link. So here we've expanded into our previous structure for the link. Uh, but when you describe a link, you could go into details for the different parts. Some parts are optional and some are required, depending on what you have. So you can see inside the visual, we have a geometry, which will have a geometry-specific code. And then we'll have an origin that's described by RPY and XYZ. And then we have a material that will have some uh, color that we define. And inside of the collision is similar from the visual in that we will still have a geometry and then we'll also have an origin. And then in inertial, we're going to have something new, which here is the mass in kilograms as well as the inertia. So the visual part of the link is used to describe the geometry of the link. And usually this can be an accurate representation of the robot or just a simplified version depending on the goal that you have. So for accurate models, you could probably use a 3D modeling software like SOLIDWORKS and you could export the STL file to get the geometry. So there's different types of geometries used in URDF files. So typically, you're going to see things like boxes, spheres, cylinder, and meshes. So for box, sphere, and cylinder, you define it um, using the geometry-specific code, as you can see here. So box, you use XYZ, sphere, you use a radius R, and the cylinder, you have a radius and a length. And then for meshes, you're going to have a file path to your STL or DAE file, and then you have a scale depending on how you want to scale your part. So the origin, which controls some of the frame locations as well as the uh, um, orientation and position of your parts, defined by RPY and XYZ, can be quite confusing. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that is. So the origin is used to define the rotation uh, using the roll pitch yaw, as well as the translation using the XYZ relative to the link's coordinate frame. So the order of rotation for RPY is ZYX. So first rotate about the X, and then about the Y, and then finally the Z. So the rotation operation is applied first, and then the translation. So for the visual and collision part, uh, visual and collision, the origin describes how the geometry is transformed relative to the link's frame. So for inertial, the origin describes the location of the center of mass relative to the link's frame. So for the origin, typically it's defined with the syntax RPY equals uh, RPY, and then XYZ equals XYZ. And we will see the axis colors usually defined by red, green, and blue, which corresponds to X, Y, and Z. 
So for the material property, it's used to define the color as well as the transparency of your color using the RBGA. And it's going to be normalized from 0 to 1. So the syntax for that is you have a material name equals color name. You have a color RBGA equals to RGBA. So some common colors you might see would be, for example, red would be 1001, green would be 0101. And blue is 0011, yellow is 1101, and then finally cyan is 0111. Now if you want to define the collision, the collision property can be used to describe a bounding shape around the link for a collision detection. So usually people use simplified shape for this for faster calculation when detecting for collision between other collision bounding shapes. So the syntax for that is you have a collision tag and then inside of here, you have a geometry, which you will have a geometry-specific code. And then to define the origin, you could set the RPY and XYZ. The inertial tag is used to describe the inertia and the mass of the link. So to do that, you have the general structure here, which you will have mass. This mass is in kilograms. And then the inertia, you have the IX, uh, IXY, IXZ, the IYY, IYZ, and then IZZ. So let's go ahead and take a look at a simple link example. So this simple link example here, we have defined the material for blue, and then we have a link name called base link, and inside of here we define our visual. So inside of our visual, we have a geometry, which we're using a cylinder, and we have our origin, so our origin we're not moving, and then we define our material here as blue. And our collision, we're also defining some geometry that's very similar to the actual visual part and also the origin, we just keep it the same. And then here for the inertial, we just set as some mass values and some inertia matrix. So let's go ahead and run this launch uh, file, which will allow us to visualize our simple link URDF file. So you can see here, this is just a simple link and you can see that everything is up and running, which we expect, which is a blue cylinder. So the general structure of a joint in a URD file is it's going to have a parent link and a child link. So inside of here, we have an example of a joint. So we have a joint name that has the name of our joint and then a type of joint, which we'll talk about later. And then here is the parent and child link, which we will have a name for it. And then we're going to have an origin, uh, an axis, and a limit so then we're going to have a dynamics for it as well. So the limit is going to depend on the type of joint, which we'll talk about later. And, but after you have everything for this, you'll have a complete joint that can connect your links together. So the types of joints that you have, there's a different few ones that you can use. So you have a fixed, which will have no motion between links. You have a continuous, which will have a rotation about the axis and there's no limits. You have a revolute, which is rotation about axis with limits in radians. You have a prismatic, which has a translation about an axis. You have a floating one, which will have a six degrees of freedom, so three translation and three rotation. And finally, you have a planar, which will have a motion on a plane with two translations and one rotation. So the parent and child link here is you're going to have a parent link with the name of your parent and a child link with your uh, name of your child. So this is usually like the order that you define your links. So you're going to have everything is going to be relative to something. So when you start expanding more links, you have to keep track of what comes first and what comes later. So for the origin and axis in terms of joints, the idea of that is a little bit different from links. So for joints, what we're actually doing is changing the frame location. So the origin describes the location of the child's frame relative to the parent frame and the axis describes the axis of rotation for the joint. So the syntax for that is RPY equals RPY and XYZ equals XYZ. For the dynamics, the dynamics will include the damping, which is expressed in Newton's uh, seconds per meter, and then the friction, which will be the static friction expressed in Newton's. So the syntax for that will be damping equals the damping coefficient and friction equals the friction coefficient. So for the limits, limits are for revolute and prismatic joints only. The lower and upper fields are in radians or meters, respectively. And then the effort is the max effort in Newton meters. And velocity, similarly, is going to be the max velocity, but in radians per second. And the syntax for that is going to be like this. So limit, lower, upper, effort, and velocity.
Now let's go ahead and take a look at a joint example. So here we have a simple joint URDF. So let's go ahead and open that file. So here we have a simple joint. So inside of our simple joint, um, what we have defined here is we're going to build on top of what we had. So here we're using a blue, and then here we have a base link. And our link, we have a new link here called a right leg. So here we're going to be rotating 90 degrees about the y-axis and then shift down by 0.3 meters. So that's what this is for the origin. And we're going to make this one white. And then here we have a joint. So for our joint, we have a base to right leg. And then we're going to make it a continuous type of joint. And then here we define the axis to be about the y-axis. And then we have a parent link, which is our base link. And then our child link is going to be our right leg. And here we're going to be shifting the origin of the child link by this amount so that it goes to the side. So we could go ahead and run this now. So we come here and run this uh, launch file, and this will allow us to view our joint. And you can see here we have a leg on the side. And then this here will allow us to rotate the leg about the y-axis, which is the green axis that we see. Now, finally, we could go ahead and take a look at a full robot example. So we'll be making a robot with 16 links and 15 joints. So below is a table that shows the 16 links. So you can see here we have cylinders, boxes, and then um, we split it up into the right and left side. We also have a gripper as well and a head and a main box. And you can see the joints. We're connecting all the different parts together. So for the joints, we have the different connections, and we specify the different joint types. So you can see some are fixed, some are going to be continuous, some will be prismatic, and some will be revolute. So we could go ahead and run this example here by using our launch file. So this will generate our robot example and allow us to move the different positions with our joint state publishers. So you can see if I rotate this around, you can see this is our full robot, and you can see that uh, all the frames show the different links uh, and joints, and it goes to the positions as we want it to. And you can see here, this is our control center, which will allow us to move the different things. So this one here is moving the gripper. So this gripper here is actually using a STL file. So if you take a look at the file for this, the robot example, you can see this is our full example here. Um, but the main thing that is different in here is that we have a mesh file name, which uh, we talked about earlier, that will define our actual gripper. So you can see here, you could play around with the different controls and see how that works. So in my next video, I'm going to talk about the URDF tutorial using Zacro files. So go check that out. If you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.